Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Brief. The whole world weighing in now on Israel's possible upcoming decision to annex Jewish parts of Judea and Samaria or the West Bank. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres calling on Israel to abandon its plans, saying it would illegally and grievously harm chances for a two-state solution. We are at a watershed moment. Israel's threat to annex parts of the occupied West Bank has alarmed Palestinians, many Israelis, and the broader international community. I urge Israeli and Palestinian leaders to commit to meaningful dialogue with the support of the international community. Similarly attacking the move, Palestinian Foreign Minister Riyad al-Maliki joining the chorus of critics, accusing Israel of believing itself above international law, as Arab League officials warn that a religious war in the region could ignite. Over a thousand European lawmakers also now signing a joint statement calling on Israel to stop its actions, and threatening sanctions if Israel refuses. The statement even alleging that Israel's failure to comply would encourage other states with territorial claims to disregard basic principles of international law. Meanwhile, Palestinian Authority President Abbas repeating threats to dissolve the PA, along with its cooperations with Israel. Pushing back hard, though, Israeli officials justifying the partial annexations, designed in line with the United States' peace to prosperity plan. Should Israel decide to extend its sovereignty, it will be doing so with respect to areas over which it has always maintained a legitimate historical and legal claim. Israeli Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi also reminding the international community that annexations will only include some 30% of the West Bank, and not likely any of the Jordan Valley, far less than what Israel originally expected to receive as part of the Oslo Peace Accords. The United States, on the other hand, possibly walking back, with senior White House officials only now meeting to informally discuss support for Israel's annexation schedule, though reports say that no decisions have been reached. That said, United States Ambassador to the UN Kelly Kraft turning attentions back on the Palestinians for their part in the decades-long stall in peace negotiations. I understand that many of you have concerns with this issue of the potential extension of Israeli sovereignty in the West Bank. At the same time, we ask that you also hold the Palestinian leadership accountable for acts they are responsible for. Alarm bells fully ringing now. The health ministry reporting the latest surge of COVID-19 infections in Israel, hitting a massive 532 new cases in just the past 24 hours. This is the largest daily Israeli jump in infections since early April. Health ministry officials also predicting the number to rise sharply to as many as over 1,000 new daily cases within the coming week. Taking bad to worse, head of public health services Professor Sigal Sedetsky saying our ability to track the spread of infection is collapsing. The total number of active cases now at about 5,800, the death toll holding at 308. But the Israeli and Palestinian public mainly feeling unafraid, even as closures across the country resume in select cities. אני ממש לא חושש משום דבר פה, האנשים בעיר ממושמעים, כולם עם מסכות, לא נכנסים לחנות יותר ממה שהתו הסגול בעצם מתיר, הכל הולך פה, מתנהל פה לפי ההחלטות של משרד הבריאות, לכן אין ממה לחשוש. השיחה אבדה מן אל-אקטסאד, ואנה יעני מע אל-אגלאק, הדה אל-אגלאק, איזה פי וראו, נעדה נחסל ג'אחת קורונה, ג'אחה עלמיה וחטירה, נחמד אללה אינו פלוסטין, איך נעני אקל חטר מן גרנה. Meanwhile, not taking any chances, the government is now pushing forward with plans to renew its phone tracking program in law. The bill passing its first of three votes in the Knesset, with 44 in favor and 32 against Wednesday night, and in spite of the Shin Beit Security Service's protest. The controversial bill's second and third readings are scheduled already for next week. That's all for now, but for more news from Israel, remember to like ILTV on Facebook and on Instagram, and to subscribe to us on YouTube, I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.